So, somebody's been a little heavy handed with the hoover and damaged your skirting boards. Don't worry, it's quite an easy fix. Hang about and I'll show you how. What are you gonna need for this? It's some wood filler. I like to use this two part stuff and the reason for that is I don't have to wait around for days for the filler to dry. It's, uh, it's kind of like an epoxy resin type based filler, I assume, because it has a hardener. So you can apply your first coat of that and within 20 minutes that's ready to sand down and you can put another coat on if you need to. Also need something to mix on. I like to use a piece of plastic from a soda bottle. The plastic's tough enough that you can mix up on it all day long, not puncture it, but it's flexible enough that once the filler goes hard, you can give it a little wobble and it'll all fall off and you've got a nice clean surface to mix up on next time. And then you're gonna want some sandpaper. Now I, I like to go with 80 grit and I pretty much use that for everything because it's coarse enough that I can sand down and I'm not gonna be there all day long getting an achy arm sanding. But it's fine enough that in 90% of cases, it will leave a paintable finish. Get yourself a knife, something to mix up with and apply the putty. So like a paint scraper, a filling knife or something like that. I, I like to use these silicon tools. So first thing first, you're gonna to wanna to just take a piece of sandpaper and just rub down all around the damage like this. That's gonna ensure that we don't have any timber fibers or loose paint that's gonna stand proud after we've filled. Now we're gonna take some of our wood filler. I don't have much left of this one. You can see I obviously love this stuff. Is with this hardener the more you apply the faster the filler goes off so with that in mind i'm going to apply probably a little more than i need because this isn't going to take long at all and i don't want to be waiting around to have to sand it down and give it a good mix up right got the filler all mixed up let's take a little like this i like to have it rolled on the front edge of me filling knife like this and then we'll start from the mitered edge the external edge will push and draw it back this way take a little more like this push into the mitre and then draw it back this way and we're not trying to get it completely flat in fact we want it to stand proud because what we'll do is we'll sand it back to where we want it rather than trying to get it first go without sanding because you'll never really hide it if you do that and then we'll go back from the other side, like this. It doesn't matter if it's sticking out on that corner there, we'll send that back and it'll be invisible when we're finished. I mean, you can use this method if you've had to go out fitting your own skirting boards and done a pretty poor job with it. So now if you look down on it, you can see that actually the filler is quite proud. If I was to hold, hold a straight edge here, it probably sticks out about a millimeter or so along that edge and along this edge. I'm gonna let it go off for about 20 minutes and it will come back with the sandpaper. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes. Now the filler's gone hard and we're ready to sand it. Now, I wouldn't normally use a sand and block myself, but it's only because I'm pretty confident doing this. I do this sort of stuff all the time. But I recommend getting a sand and block, which is, when I say a sand and block, I just mean anything with a nice, hard, straight, flat edge that you can wrap your sand and paper around. Um, that way it just gives you a little more control when you come to sand this uh, give you a nice finish along that edge the makeshift sand and block the sandpaper Now when you get close to the finished surface where you want it, I recommend taking your sand and block and then sanding in this direction, not that way. The problem is if you start going that way, especially when you get close to your finished edge, there's a chance you may drag some of that filler out and have to repeat the process. So we'll go this way, and it's more likely to protect that mitered edge. That is a lovely crisp edge. Any carpenter would be proud to leave a skirting board looking like that. Well, that's basically it. So I'm just gonna finish cleaning this up now, that little repair I made earlier, but I just wanted to give you an idea of just how easy it is to do these repairs yourself. 